A few of you wanted me to talk about this new drug that is out now called Trank. And I want to say that it started more so in the upper east, the upper northeast. But I have a feeling that with time, it's definitely going to spread. Now, this has been talked about maybe, I want to say since January. But it hasn't gotten widespread like that. And they probably won't make it a widespread thing or a known thing until there's like a massive outbreak of people just falling ill because of it but there's this new drug called trank but the the technical name for it is isalazine i think that's how you pronounce it and as you can see that's the bottle right there and this is a drug that is considered they call it the zombie drug now when i typed trank zalazine into the google images this was one of the cleaner images that i saw because a lot of the ones that i did see was of images of people's hands literally look like they were rotting you know how if you took a hammer and a chisel to chip away at something like a brick or a wall or something to knock it down. That's how people's hands were looking. They looked like they were literally chipping away. It almost looked like their skin was breaking off in pieces rather than in flesh, if that makes sense. They looked like cracked drywall. Like it, it was really disturbing to see. Uh, and I was not going to put that image up here. But it's seen as a flesh eating drug. And it reminds me of a drug that I talked about on my channel years ago called Crocodile. Now, Crocodile, to my knowledge, did not make it to the U.S., but it was really widespread overseas. I can't remember exactly what country or nation or continent it was in, but I want to say it was in a European nation. I want to say it was over there. But you really don't hear about Crocodile anymore. But Crocodile, too, like this trank, this trank is like a flesh-eating drug. And I believe xylazine is a form of fentanyl, but it's mixed with something else. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and read this article that was posted on the New York Times back in January, because this is one of the only articles that I could find that actually gives you a rundown of what this thing actually is. The more recent ones are talking about the people that's being affected right now. But I want to know more about this drug. And as a matter of fact, this drug is mixed with something. It said that it's, it's an animal sedative mixed with fentanyl. You heard that correctly. This is a animal sedative for animals mixed with fentanyl. That's just a recipe for disaster. And people are putting this into their bodies. Thus, why their bodies are starting to rot and they starting to look very zombified. Over a matter of weeks, Tracy McCann watched in horror as the bruises she was accustomed to getting from injecting fentanyl began hardening into an armor of crusty, blackened tissue. Something must have gotten into the supply. Switching corner dealers didn't help. People were saying that everyone's dope was being cut with something that was causing gruesome, painful wounds. Basically, what it sounds to me is like they were running out of fentanyl in, in order to keep a supply going they ended up experimenting quote unquote and mixed it with something else so they can keep the supply going and that's a dangerous game right then the thing is the people who do that mixing are not going to tell the person their customer what they've mixed it with or even much less they're not going to tell them that they mixed it because as long as it comes in a vial or something and it's clear they could be injecting sugar water into their or, or some kind of a liquid placebo into their body and they wouldn't even know unless they didn't feel the effect uh, I'd wake up in the morning crying because my arms were dying, McCann said, who's 39. In her shattered Philadelphia neighborhood and increasingly in drug hot zones around the country, an animal tranquilizer called Xylazine, known by street names like Trank, Trank Dope, and the zombie drug, is being used to bulk up illicit fentanyl, making its impact even more devastating. Xylazine causes wounds that erupt with a scaly dead tissue called eschar untreated that can lead to amputation it induces a blackout stupor for hours rendering users vulnerable to rape i'm sorry violations and robbery when people come to the high from the fentanyl has long since faded and they immediately crave more because xylazine is a sedative and not an opioid it resists standard opioid overdose reversal treatments more than 90% of Philadelphia's lab-tested dope samples were positive for xylazine, according to the most recent data. It's too late for Philly, said Sean Westfall, an outreach worker with Prevention Point Philadelphia, a 30-year-old health services center in Kensington, the neighborhood at the epicenter of the city's drug trade. 
Philly supply is saturated. If other places around the country have a choice to avoid it, they need to hear our story. A study published in June detected xylazine in the drug supply in 36 states and the District of Columbia. In New York, xylazine has been found in 25% of drug samples, though health officials say the actual saturation is certainly greater. In November, the Food and Drug Administration issued a nationwide four-page xylazine alert to clinicians. In December, the Office of National Drug Control Policy said it was, the tracking, it was tracking the spread closely and the journal's pediatrics published an analysis of three cases of xylazine ingestion by toddlers. But xylazine's true prevalence is unknown. Hospitals don't test for it. Some state medical examiners don't routinely do so either. The drug exists in a legal gray zone, approved 50 years ago by the FDA as a veterinarian prescribed an analgestic. It is not listed as a controlled substance for animals or humans and so is not subject to strict monitoring. Thus, it has not been on the radio radar of federal law enforcement for diversion or abuse. As with many trapped by Trank, Ms. McCann's hellish descent began with prescription opioids. In 2009, when she was 27, she developed a dependence on painkillers prescribed after a severe car crash. A boyfriend she met at one of her six days in rehab introduced her to heroin. Cheaper and more potent fentanyl elbowed heroin off the streets. Then as the pandemic descended in 2020, Trank stormed Philadelphia. Last July, she was evicted from her room in Kensington. I was sleeping on the sidewalks crying every night, knowing that I was better than that, Miss McCann said. Someone next to her got shot. A man tried to violate her, but she defended herself with a box cutter. On the hot summer street, she saw people whose trank wounds were covered with fleas and maggots. Even so, she said, I cannot pull myself away from that drug. On a recent chilly afternoon, hundreds of people filled the streets surrounding Prevention Point, carrying used syringes to exchange for sterile ones. Some then made their way to the Center Wound Care Clinic, which has been a 313% three, rise in visits over the past three years, largely due to Trank. Brooke Petter, a 38-year-old tattoo artist nicknamed the Hood Grandma, rolled her wheelchair to the exchange check-in and handed over a gallon container filled with syringes. Her mother, sister, and wife died of overdoses. Just over a year ago, her right leg had to be amputated because of the infection from a trank wound that bore into the bone. Miss Petter, who had been using drugs in Kensington for 13 years, said she was eager to warn about trank, especially to newbies arriving in the neighborhood lured by its decades-old reputation as a drug marketplace. They come from all over the country. Many arrive with money and pay locals to seek out drugs until they turn into locals themselves. She unrolled a bandage from elbow to palm beneath patches of blackened tissue, exposed white tendons and pus. The sheared flesh was hot and red. To stave off xylazine's excruciating withdrawal, she said she injects trank dope several times a day, fearful that injecting in a flesh site could create a new wound, she reluctantly shoots into her festering forearm. The Trank dope literally eats your flesh, she says. It's a self-destruction at its finest. Trank dope is an ever-influctuating blend of xylazine, a sedative, and usually an opioid, with each type of drug binding to different brain receptors. While there is ample research on opioids, there is almost none on xylazine in humans. Though it has been detected in fatal overdoses where opioids were present, its direct correlation with fatality is undetermined. Xylazine was developed in 1962 as an anesthetic for veterinary purposes. Trials in humans were shut down because the drug led to respiratory depression and low blood pressure. It's used as an addictive substitute for heroin, most likely started in the 2000s. In 2011, a study observed that people in farming areas of Puerto Rico were injecting anesthesia de caballo or horse anesthesia and developing, and developing severe skin ulcers. You got to think, you have to be extremely out there on a narcotic or a drug to inject something into your body that is not meant for a human being, something that is meant for a an animal especially one like a horse come on like think about the average human size and the average horse size what do you think and that reminds me of that one with the uh with the elephant one the elephant tranquilizer and people was injecting that into them that's how you know someone has an extreme drug addiction if they have to use animal tranquilizers or sedatives in order to get a high 
In Kensington, which has a substantial Puerto Rican population, the drug was found in 2006, but it wasn't about until 2018 that trank use, trank use began escalating there and then throughout the Northeast. Some epidemi epidemiologists theorized that during the pandemic, bottles of domestic xylazine purchased online with a veterinary prescription or diverted from veterinary supply chains became popular as a cheap, easy opioid filler. Unsuspecting Kensington customers saw an advantage to the new mix. A bag of heroin ran about $10. Trank dope ran for about $5. But cost accrued. Kim Baraskas, age 53, wondered why after shooting up she was falling over walking up later and then immediately feeling that we're all sick again and we need to get another shot most people tell me i wish i could find dope that didn't have xylazine said dr joseph de Ar uh, de Ariosia. i probably i know i completely messed up his name an expert in toxicology and addiction medicine and Temple University Hospital in Philadelphia, which treats dozens of xylazine users daily. But what gets put out there on the street is what people have to use. Reversing an overdose where xylazine was involved is tricky. A dose of the overdose halting medicine naloxone, which blocks or reverses opioids effect on brain receptors, will address the fentanyl, but will not will still won't rouse a victim sed sedated with xylazine. Desperate rescuers may try a second or third dose, but too much naloxone can put someone into withdrawal, vomiting, and writhing. Responders are advised to check whether the person is breathing, protect the head and airways, apply one dose of naloxone, and call for backup. Even when op even with opioid withdrawal is contained, the harsh xylazine withdrawal continues. People keep using trank dope for fear of getting sick migraines, double vision, nausea, numbness in the fingers and toes, sweats and body rattling anxiety. There is no medical protocol yet for managing it. Dr. D. Orazio, I think I got his name right this time, typically uses anti-anxiety drugs to treat the patient's symptoms. And I actually just came across a picture right now of a woman and she, her fingertips are black. Now this is a white woman. Her fingertips are about as black as this black hat that she's wearing, and they look rotten. Like they, ugh. Let me hurry up and scroll past it. That's that's a hard thing to look at. Doctors are perplexed by how xylazine causes wounds so extreme that they initially resemble chemical burns, and that's exactly what it looked like. They may not even appear at injection sites, but often on shins and forearms. Miss McCann's trank scorched forearms reeked oozed, itched, and seared. Washing them regularly was nearly impossible. With public restrooms, her only source was clean water. She finally made her way to Prevention Point's wound care clinic where nurses debrided sores, dispensed antibiotic ointment and supplies, and taught her how to change bandages. Using toenail clippers and alcohol wipes, she meticulously trimmed the ashar. One day in August, she caught a glimpse of herself. Normally weighing 50 pounds, she was down to 90. I thought I'd either need to go do a lethal shot of xylazine or get the hell out of Kensington, she said. That's crazy. She thought that just by looking at how her weight drops, which is most likely caused by the drugs, that she might need to take another shot of this drug that was most likely slowly decaying her body. The only person who would let her use a cell phone was a guy whose arm and leg had been amputated because of his trank wounds. He was still injecting into his leg stump. That, whew, I'm telling you, all this thing is crazy. She made her decision. Now in her fifth month of sobriety at an intensive outpatient program near St. Louis and at a healthy weight, Miss McCann is both stunned by and proud of her progress. From wrist to elbow, her meandering pink and purple scars are a road map roadmap of being lost and found people out here might think my arms look really ugly but they aren't familiar with trank wounds yet she said to me my arms look really beautiful now yeah i'm looking at a picture of her y'all can't see it but i'm looking at her pictures of her arms now they look a hell of a lot better than how they described in the article one afternoon mr westfall whose coordinates prevention Point's overdose prevention team walked along Kensington Avenue, handing out free nasal spray doses of Narcan, the opioid overdose reversal medication. He and another outreach worker visited encampments of people on the street, some shooting up trank dope openly as local residents and shot workers scurried by in the accumulating darkness. People slumped toward the parking meters and in doorways, heads lolling, necks twisting. Three huddled around a small bonfire, burning a blanket for fuel 
Within 45 minutes, the two men had given away more than 100 doses of Narcan. They hung blue opioid reversal kits on street poles for anyone to grab filled with disposable gloves. Narcan and plastic mouth guards for mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Already overwhelmed by fentanyl, social welfare organizations, public health officials, and clinics are in the early throes of figuring out how to withstand shrink. At least one state, Florida, has listed xylazine as a controlled substance. A comparable federal scheduling and prompt much stricter monitoring of prescriptions and suppliers of the drug, including in online transactions. An official with the Drug Enforcement Administration, who declined to be named, said that the agency had been in contact with the FDA and looks forward to the completion of its scientific and medical evaluation and scheduling recommendation. Some public health experts noting that tighter controls on diverted prescription painkillers contributed to the rise of illicit fentanyl questioned whether scheduling xylazine will alleviate its attendant problem, especially if more support programs are not forthcoming. For now, the practical goal is to minimize xylazine's damage by educating those who could be exposed, urging them not to use alone. Many leaders in the so-called, well, how about advising them not to use at all? I think that would be the best bet. Many, many leaders in the so-called harm reduction movement are pressing for supervised injection sites where people can use in safer conditions and even have their drugs tested. Only two exist in the United States, both in New York City, where in 10 minutes people can learn whether their drugs include xylazine. The Philadelphia Health Department has also been reaching out to clinicians who work with trained patients and Dr. D'Orazio has been lecturing wildly about how to manage cases. But a longstanding obstacle to progress is shame. People who use drugs often feel too mortified by their wounds to come in from the shadows to get help at emergency rooms. That shame can be perpetrated by healthcare workers who may dismiss these patients' agonizing withdrawal as mere drug-seeking behavior. Stigma is so deeply entrenched within hospital culture, said Sarah Wallace Keishan, a prevention point nurse who wears casual clothes rather than medical scrubs, hoping to appear non-judgmental and welcoming. Well, you can do all of that, but the, some of them might carry disease. And you going to wish you had them scrubs on. Just saying. Mr. Westfall continued his journey down Kensington Avenue. Suddenly at the intersection of Kensington and Allegheny, shouts went up from a gathering count, um, crowd. Get the Narcan. A man was splayed out on the sidewalk unconscious, announcing that he had first aid training. Mr. Westfall asked people to hold off on Narcan. He pulled out disposable gloves, checked the man's pulse, and opened his mouth to make sure it was free of food syringe caps, anything he could choke on. Mr. Westfall tilted the head back to check breathing and kept the airway open. Then making a fist, he rolled his knuckles briskly up and down the man's chest in a sternum rub. The surprising pain can jolt someone awake. The man began to come too stupefied. Mr. Westfall and some onlookers hoisted him gently. Still heavily sedated, he lurched in the freezing wind, pants drooping. On either side, two women slipped their hands inside his open, flapping jacket. They were fumbling for his zipper, which they secured to keep him warm. Then, arms around him, holding him up, the three headed back down Kensington Avenue. Wow. That's a lot. That is a lot right there. Uh, it's a good thing that I do not take any type of narcotic like that. I'm not even a drug person and if i do have to take any type of medications i make sure that it is prescribed by my physician i would highly suggest though to be safe if you are on any type of medication like say you're just getting on some kind of a med to make sure you check to see the ingredients inside of your medication for a multitude of purposes not just to see if this is in there but also make sure it's not something you're allergic to because your body can have a reaction i remember one time i was put on some medication like only for like a day. And then my doctor advised that I get off of it after they did some blood work and said that my body would react badly to it. So I stopped taking it after a day. She said, just toss those, those, uh, those meds away, just toss them in the trash. And they gave me an alternative. So yeah, I need to know from people like, what do y'all think about this? Like, what is your take about this after hearing everything that I just read about Trank? It sounds very scary. Like this actually sounds about as bad, if not worse than regular opioids. Cause they said this, they said Narcan can barely even work on bringing somebody back from an overdose of, of this because of what it's mixed with. It's, it's a, it sounds like it's a very tainted drug.
So if you see something that says xylazine on there, you might run the other way and see if there's an alternative that you can use for whatever it is that you might have an issue with. Because the last thing you want to do is get strung out on a drug that can slowly kill you or slow, like slowly but surely decay you. But the crazy thing about it is, is that when I was reading the story, the craziest thing that I, I read was how dependent people got on this even after this thing was slowly killing them. This thing made them more dependent on it. You would think that, oh, okay, I see the problem is going on with me. I'm going to stop taking it. But they felt what could cure their issues or their problems with the drug was to take more of it. So it's almost like this thing got literally into their brain and their brain and their mind was playing tricks on them to continue to take this drug when they didn't when they did not need to or weren't supposed to. So it looks like we got a new they said this been around since the 60s. But now it seems like it's circled its wagon back and it's making a huge comeback. So it looks like we got a new drug out there now. This is going to be one long, hot summer. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's still cold. It's still wintertime. But I have a feeling when summer hits, it's probably going to be even worse.